And thank you, Arlene. State Senator Jose Serrano, City Councilwoman Melissa Mark Viverito, and the East Harlem Immigrant Service Network are coming together to combat stigma, homophobia, and transphobia in our community. Now joining us to share more about their upcoming event to expand the dialogue about sexuality and gender identity is Justin Rush, Press Secretary and Community Liaison of the Office of Senator Jose Serrano, and Joe Presley from the Office of Council Member Melissa Mark Viverito, and we welcome you both to the show. Thank you. Okay, so we talk about the issues of homophobia, transphobia, and somebody says, it's not that big. Yes, no, maybe so. Oh, I definitely think it's, it's, it's big. Um, you know, we need to definitely make certain, certain that there's visibility for our communities, not just in Greenwich Village. Um, lesbian, gay, bisexual folks, transgender folk, we, we live across the city. And unfortunately, in many of our communities, we are invisible. Uh, at least we want to be, many of us are seemingly invisible in the conversations in our communities. So the event that we're doing on Friday is really about increasing our visibility and then also building bridges between communities and making certain that um, we are included in ongoing conversations about participating. Stereotypes and stigma big, you know, so as we look at this, what are some of the ways that we're going to address breaking down some of these stereotypes and some of these stigmas? I think one of the ways that we're going to do this through the roundtable discussion is that we're going to bring a number of different people in from the community. We're going to bring a number of different people from East Harlem, a number of different people from the South Bronx, people that are within the LGBT community just to sit around and have a conversation. This is going to be an all-inclusive conversation. We don't want anybody to feel like they're left out. But we want to bring everybody together to be able to say, this is what's occurred in my life. This is how these things have made me feel. And to share experiences and to probably understand that everybody in the room probably has a lot more in common than they actually have that's different. And that's just one of the things that we want to have. We want to have a, a great, all-inclusive conversation where everybody can really come and feel and have their voice heard and their opinion heard. So, we, so maybe we can come to a common ground and, and combat the stigma that exists in, within some of these communities. How willing are people to come to the table to have this discussion? I think increasingly so people are willing to do that. And so I'm going to give you sort of a personal experience, right? Mm -hmm. So my, my husband and I are married two years ago uh, in, in, here in New York City. And what has happened, I think, even over the past two years with marriage equality coming to New York State is that you're seeing more and more people just accepting that the fact that, you know, as lesbian, gay, bisexual, and transgender folks, that we are everywhere mm -hmm. and that we are vibrant parts of our communities and that increasingly I really do see you know, that folks are willing to have these conversations. So even, for instance, in my own family, right, mm -hmm. um, my brother works for transit, right? He, he, um, he lives out in Pennsylvania with his family. He comes to uh, my house um, twice, three times a week to stay with my husband and I because it's a long commute to get back to Pennsylvania, right? And it's just interesting to see, you know, all that he just really even gets it even more so that just like he and his wife, my husband and I, we have the same lives that they have. And I think a lot of this is about folks just having honest and open conversations and people being out in their lives and really making certain that we're creating spaces to have conversations and moving the ball down the court even further. Mm -hmm. And I also think that it's very important that we um, bring a member of the trans community, the mm -hmm. transgender community. I know a lot of times in, in speaking with people, they feel like that's something that's left out the T in the LGBT is that's left right. out. But we're going to be having a real conversation about what that experience is like and what, what living your day to day is like in, in a, as a facet of the community that it often, oftentimes feels left out. Mm -hmm. But we want everybody to be heard. We want every single person in this, in this round table discussion. We're going to open it up from the people that are on the panel to the people that are in the audience. We want to have a real, honest, open dialogue with everybody that is there. And I think that, like, again, as I said, people will find that we have a lot more in common than, that, than we do. Now, both of you work for political, uh, political leaders, uh, elected mm -hmm. officials, uh, and some have said now, given the fact that, you know, the political world has seemed to embrace the LGBT <laughs> community, that more and more people are actually coming on board. Give us your perspective on elected officials and having that conversation with elected officials, because the reality is, while many of them vote in the affirmative, behind closed doors, not all have always been so embracing. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, I can tell you that the council member that I work for ah. right, <laughs> is fantastic. On Otherwise, you wouldn't be sitting here, right? <laughs> <laughs> no, but, you know, it really is the truth. Right. I mean, she is the chair of the, she's a co-chair of the Progressive Caucus for the city council. And 
even before it was popular, she understood the importance of talking about and dialoguing and, and building bridges with the lesbian gay community. Mm -hmm. um, her, I mean, she has no problems with my saying this, two of her brothers are gay, and it's personal for her. And so, and I know that she's not alone. I know that's true for State Senator Serrano as well. We are blessed to have in East Harlem a cadre of elected officials who want to have this dialogue, and not just now. So mm -hmm. even with this event that we're doing uh, on Friday, it's not just the, the conversation, right? We want to also build a continuum of conversation in community building beyond Friday as well. Uh, that's where I was going, because just I was going to say, it's nice to talk. <laughs> that's it's right. nice to come together that's and have right. a beat. You right. know, we get together, have a nice time. <laughs> But after that, then what? So you have this conversation, we have this dialogue, where do you go from here after we've had this? I think that one, one of the things that we're gonna learn at the, while we're having the conversation is we're gonna get a lot of positive feedback, not just from the elected officials, but from the community as well. And if this is something that could eventually, I know my senators, Senator Serrano, and our office have been talking about, maybe this would be something that we could do on a very regular basis, open up the dialogue on a very regular basis. So, so where we can we can come to a common ground and see this is what from the community what we they feel that needs to be done right. and mm -hmm. if, if there's something that can be done on a legislative end then that will be something that we can discuss with our, our elected officials I know my state senator is very open to anything and everything that can be done as far as achieving equal rights and human rights and making sure that everybody has access to the same um, things that everybody else does and mm -hmm. tolerance is very important That's so right. we're very dedicated to this and this is something that we're going to continue to put into place in our day to day. How often do we see LGBT uh, issues uh, come across your desk or come come into the elected uh, into an elected's office? Uh, because you know you have your constituency and you have your base of people, and people say different demographics come and bring different things. But how often are we seeing LGBT issues really reaching the desk of our electeds? I know for us in, in, in the council member's office, we have a number of issues that folks present to us. I know just recently there was a, a violent attack of a young man walking down 116th Street who was attacked because of his sexuality. We've had issues, uh, I know just recently, six months ago, I know I worked personally on an issue where a, a gentleman in, uh, in the west side of our district, in, in, um, in Morningside Heights, in, in Manhattan Valley, actually he had an issue where his landlord was denying him the opportunity to renew his lease based on his sexuality. So these issues are definitely in our communities. Now I will say that it's important that you know the, 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 our elected officials and uh, the faith-based community as well, that we all create spaces where folks can feel comfortable to come forward in our communities. All too often, still in 2013, folks believe that to enable to, in order to address their issues, they have to go down, down to a downtown agency. Now, we're not saying that those agencies are important. They're critical, but also there are resources right in their own backyards that they need to avail themselves to. And we're hoping that this will open that dialogue up. So, Justin, this Friday is the dialogue. Let's let the people know what's going on and what time. So, um, this Friday uh, from 9 o'clock a.m. to 11.30 a.m., we're going to be hosting Bridging the Gap, Expanding the Dialogue. It's going to be held at the East Harlem Asthma Center on 110th Street. And we would love, um, this is going to be a great roundtable discussion, we would love for everyone to come out. We want to hear the voice of the people. We want them to interact with their elected officials. And we want to have an amazing conversation so that we can hopefully combat stigma within the East Harlem and in the South Bronx community. And there you see the information right there on your screen, Bridging the Gap, Expanding the Dialogue, Friday, June the 7th from 9 to 11.30, as Justin said. And we want you to make sure that you wake, make your way over there for, uh, for that dialogue. And I think a lot of people are... Uh, saying, well, this is a, a step forward in the right direction. Agree? Definitely. Absolutely. Well, Absolutely. Definitely. Yeah. So we want to thank uh, Justin and Joe for coming. Now, listen, if they want, now, if someone has an issue regarding LGBT issues, what advice do you give them in terms of like contacting the electors and stuff of that nature? What would you say? I would say definitely call, and I'll give you my information. The information Go right ahead. In our Go office, right ahead. Uh, call the council member's office. Mm -hmm. Our number is 212 828 9800. We have a number of folks who will help you, who will. Uh, assist you in any way that you need help. We will direct you also to other agencies that could be helpful to you. But I would strongly suggest that if you're facing um, any issues around bias or discrimination, to definitely reach out to your elected officials office, whether it's our office. And you can always stop by to Senator Serrano's district office on 104th and Lexington. It's, um, our number is 212-828-5829. There's always a staff member that would be helpful and I'm addressing those concerns and needs. All righty, uh, Justin Rush and Joe Presley, and we thank them both for coming and sharing with us. And uh, we'll tell people once again, Friday, June 7th, from 9 to 11.30, make your way out there. Thank you guys right, for coming you. and sharing with us.